there's a few key points, uh, as you've seen in the chart that I showed you in the chat room. Um, that's going to be very key. I want people to have a really good understanding of what's occurring and the reason, one of the reasons why um, you see such a miss uh, uh, separation of one reality to another is the only way to put it. But first, let's start with Bitcoin. And we can see Bitcoin has gone and flattened out here and holding between the upper 9,000 to mid 9,000 range. And there's really no movement of it. It had that one big pop up um, a week ago. And now it's just basically meandering around. That's because it's being pushed, you know, sucked down to here. This is where it should have gone on this move here, but then it, they pushed it up. It's very strange um, time. So numbers wise, I, I can still get that 10,700. Um, but ultimately I'm going to be looking for under the 8,000. Uh, and once that happens, then I will reallocate everything correctly. But until then, I, I'm mostly looking for the sell side. Um, if we do get the hedge upwards, great. But again, I, I'm not very confident on the upside versus the downside. But at the same time, longer term, I, I want to be a holder of Bitcoin, especially with what's going on in the stock market. This right here is stupidity and stupidity always ends stupidly um, I know plenty of people and this is kind of an interesting disconnect and everything is disconnected from reality people with real money and, and smart money as they would be known um, they're not holding on to their stocks here they're selling into this rally uh, this is not something you would go over and see expecting further price increases. And the reason why is they're not only doing that, they're going into gold and they're hedging and they're selling real estate, which is a scary prospect. You know, people with money, when they start selling real estate, that's not good. Um, so the reasons why is because, you know, they, they see the, the writing on the wall. Um, that infographic, that little picture I showed you right there that shows the, uh, basically the, the loans and the money being pumped into Wall Street from the Fed uh, is ridiculous. And unfortunately, it's the, the U.S. taxpayer, the 90-something percent of uh, people in the United States that are going to be on the hook for this. And it's all because Donald Trump wants to be reelected and the Fed is going over and doing his bidding now. And it's a really scary thing because it's fiscally irresponsible. He's going to be known for causing great turmoil and, and but you know what cycles happen 90 years from here was uh the the crash of uh, 1929 right and 90 year cycles are normal uh 90 years back you guys never heard about it but in 1837 and um to uh, had a period of time where it was the same thing as 1929 but you didn't hear about that one because everybody has a very short-term memory um, just like uh, racial inequality against African Americans. You know what? We're all African, technically. If we go back hundreds of thousands of years, that's where we all come from. <laughs> if I want to think about it that way. Um, so you don't have to be racist against anybody because we all basically come from the same spot. And But we all have these short-term memory lapses of where we can't really comprehend longer sets of data where they repeat themselves so you can go over and take notice and uh, make your life better or protect yourself in, in, in the shortest uh, way to put that. But um, here are some of the key numbers. We're in this area up here and this is going to add as resistance. Now the Fed can go over and buy and then you can see the large expansion of money they're putting into the marketplace but the higher it goes the more effort it's going to cause for them to do it um, because the law of diminishing returns and they're pushing it as much as they can but man let me tell you it's costing them a lot of money and that's the scary part because they're trying to prevent the pullback uh, because the smart money is going to sell into them and um, so that the the big money is going to make money off of the taxpayers by what the Fed's doing because they're 
telegraphing the move, man. And it's just like pathetic. Um, so the billionaires are going to make more money off of the stupid people and the government. And Donald Trump can get reelected. You know, and honestly, after all is said and done, uh, who's going to be on the hook for this? It's going to be the U.S. taxpayer. And uh, Donald Trump's going to be like, oh, it wasn't me. Um, but he caused all this. And uh, it could be very ugly in the future. Uh, when you get stupid people doing stupid things, you're going to get stupid results. And that's just the way it is. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to go over was um, this right here. Uh, we got Chevron. I've started shorting it. And I'm a seller. And now I'm looking for us to get under all the way down here to uh, the 80, 79 area, the mid-79 area. Uh, short term, I would look for under 89, so I'd take half here, and I've sold it all the way, going all the way up. I have one here, and I have another sell right here in the 105 range, in the 105, 60, 62, I believe it is, and um, that's basically it for Chevron. I'm a short on that. I'm started to short the market um, against some of my longs that I've had, and um, I'm hedging basically, and that's what the smart money will do is they will hedge against, you know, you. That's what you do. You, you when the markets are good and they're going really well, and you're making a lot of money, you try to make money on the long side when things are, you know, really great, and when they're bad and things aren't that great, you try to lose less money. That's the philosophy that I follow. So that when things are good, you push it, and when things are bad, you reduce it, and. Um, you know, you let the stupid people make you money, and they're obviously doing a really good job right now of uh, um, making a good setup is the only way I could put it. Uh, but we don't know the complete ramifications of um, how far um, he can push it up and the Fed can push the prices up, but it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, but that's life. It's insane. We live in an insane time, COVID-19. We got uh, China, we have, uh, and there's another one. There's the China credit bubble, and nobody is even paying any attention to that because they're a communist country, and their their numbers don't mean anything because they just go over and um, project whatever they want. But China is in a, a giant credit bubble. When you go over and have your GDP not producing um, the same alignment as your money supply, where your money supply is much higher, and they're a factor of 2.4 to 3, um, that's, those, those are dangerous conditions. Those are economically disastrous conditions for the future. So all of this coming together, it's not going to be pretty. And uh, we'll see what happens. But it's not just the United States. It's all over the place. And that's good for Bitcoin longer term. But not short term. Short term, they're, they're pushing the, the, you know, the big moves up and that'll probably be into the, the winter, you know, until the election is over. And then God help us all. That's all I can say. Other than that, that's this week's video. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back next week and talk to you soon.